When I was 16, I lived with my parents in a normal home in the suburbs. My parents were the type to take a lot of trips, both for work and leisure, and would do so all throughout the year. So when they would go during the school year, I'd stay home and watch the house for anywhere from a couple days to a whole week. I didn't mind, and sometimes even enjoyed it. During this week, my parents were both away for six days, so pretty much every night I'd go out and get food from somewhere. It was on the second night alone that I played video games on the computer for nearly four hours straight. It was a Friday, so I was staying up late and didn't have to do any homework. But around 8.15, I realized I hadn't even eaten anything yet. I took a break and got in my car, driving to a sandwich shop nearby. It was close to closing time, so I wasn't expecting a line or anything. But when I walked in, there was a single man standing at the counter. He looked like he'd just ordered and was waiting for his food. I stepped around him and an employee took my order. Then I stood behind the man and waited as well. While I was there though, I noticed how rugged the man looked. He was tall and skinny, wearing beat up clothes and having long, thinning hair. He got his order and left, but I couldn't help but watch him leave, intrigued by his unusual appearance. A couple minutes later, I got my food and went out to my car, getting in and leaving the parking lot. It wasn't very busy out, so I got home pretty quick. I went to my room and sat at my desk and turned on a video to watch while I ate. It was 9pm by then, but I wasn't that tired and was planning on staying up for another few hours at least. As I sat there though, I heard a quick and subtle sound from downstairs. I paused the video and listened, but didn't hear anything more. I stood up and leaned my head into the hallway, listening again, but still not hearing anything. At this point, I still didn't know what the sound was. I wasn't paying attention enough, and it was so quick that I couldn't even really tell where in the house it came from. Although thinking it was probably nothing, I still wanted to be sure, so I walked downstairs and looked around. There wasn't much to see. Everything was just how it had been left, but as I walked past the front door, I realized what the sound was. I grabbed the door handle and shook it, recreating the exact sound I heard. Someone had tested the door. I quickly looked out the peephole, not seeing anything. Then I ran around to the back door. I scanned the backyard until my eyes fell on a figure. They were facing away from the house, standing at the door to the shed. He was tall and thin and after a few seconds, I was almost positive that it was the man I'd seen earlier that night at the sandwich shop. Only a moment later though, he forced the shed doors open and stepped in. I took this as my chance to call the police, so I ran up to my room and dialed 911 as I watched the shed from my room window. The operator said officers were en route, but less than a minute later, the man rushed out of the shed, holding several large tools. He hurried toward the house, heading straight for the back door. I ran out into the hallway to see if I could do anything to stop him, or maybe even run out of the house, but I was stopped by the piercing thud of metal slamming against the back door. My adrenaline spiked, and in those few moments, I made the decision to run for it. I sprinted down the stairs and straight for the front door, seeing the man continuing to break down the back door. I ran out into my front yard and onto the street, running to the corner of the block. A few minutes passed before two police cars pulled into the driveway and went in through the open front door. I made my way back to the house, getting there just as they pulled the man out and locked him in their car. They found him holding a heavy pipe wrench that he'd gotten from my parents' shed. Inside the house though, it looked like the man went on a rampage, destroying everything he could in the few minutes it took for the cops to show up. Why he followed me home and did what he did is unknown, 
but the man clearly didn't seem very stable mentally. If I had chosen to stay inside though, there's no doubt that the man would have broken into my room before the cops would have made it, and I don't think anyone can know for sure what he would have done to me. Four years ago, I lived in a very small one-bedroom house with one of my best friends. We couldn't afford anything bigger, so that's why we settled with a one-bedroom. I slept on the futon in the living room, and my friends slept in the actual bedroom. This happened in fall, when it was just starting to get cold. My friend had taken a few days to go visit his sister a few hours away, so I was the only one at the house. This was over the weekend too, so I got to spend both entire days enjoying having the space to myself. It's not that I didn't like having him around, but it was just nice to not be crammed together in a tiny house for once. Anyway, on Sunday night, I went out to pick up some groceries and got home around 7. I had work the next day, but given the unusual circumstances, I decided to stay up a little later and watch a movie. I stayed there on the couch for at least an hour, almost finishing the movie, when there was a quiet thump from down the hallway. I looked over, not seeing anything, and figuring it was just the house, so I kept on with the movie. For the next 30 minutes, there were no other sounds, so the thump was completely insignificant and had fully left my mind. Once the movie was over, I filled up my water bottle and went back to the futon, pulling it out into a bed and laying down. I was on my phone for a while, but I fell asleep sometime around 11. When I woke up, my eyes felt really heavy and my vision was blurry. I wasn't sure why I'd woken up, but I knew it was still late into the night. I rubbed my eyes a bit and looked over at the clock. But a very faint sound came from the other side of the house. Wood creaking, like someone carefully walking across the floorboards. My eyes widened and I snapped fully awake. My heart rate started rising as I got off the futon and walked over to the hallway. The creaking had stopped, but looking down the hallway, I got this terrifying feeling. I walked down until I reached the door to my friend's bedroom, then I leaned against it and listened. It was quiet, not even a sound coming from the house. I slowly twisted the door handle and pushed it open a few inches, moving my eyes across the room as I continued to open the door wider. It looked empty, but I quickly noticed how messy the room was. There were things scattered around all over the floor and bed. Confused, I took a step into the room and flicked on the light. Instantly, from the corner of my eye, I saw a figure move away from the gap between the closet door. I jumped out of the room and slammed the door shut, then ran to get my phone as I heard the closet door opening and footsteps going into the hallway. Once I had my phone, I ran to the back door, seeing a large man coming down the hallway toward me. I got out and went through the backyard, but the man didn't follow. A minute later, I got to where I felt safe and called the police. They searched the house, but ultimately found nothing useful in figuring out who the man was or why he was there. They also aren't entirely sure how he got into the house, but it's likely he broke in while I was away getting groceries that night. My friend was just as terrified as I was once I told him everything, and we eventually moved out of the house, hopefully to never encounter that man again. I had bought my first house in my early 20s and lived alone. I was content and at peace living alone and decided to buy a house out in the country as opposed to the urban setting my apartment was located in. I had a few neighbors, but most kept to themselves as I did as well. The house was a ranch style home, which meant that there was no second floor, only a basement and first floor. 
The master bedroom was on the back side of the house, looking straight into the small backyard and then nothing but woods beyond that. Since the basement was underground, the outside entry door had what is referred to as a bilco door, which is composed of two steel doors that swing out to each side, then a set of steps taking you down to a standard size entry door into the basement of the house. I normally do not keep those Bilko exterior doors locked, especially in the summertime, in case I need to get into the basement from the backyard. During the winter though, I don't need to get in or out of the basement, so I lock those doors, and sometimes even in the fall as well. The first two years were quiet, peaceful, and enjoyable. I could walk out my back door and go hunting in the woods behind my house. I would get up in the mornings on days off and just open my garage door from sunrise to sunset with no issues at all with anyone coming around uninvited. I worked a rotating 12-hour day-slash-night shift schedule, which was brutal to get used to. I often had trouble switching from night shift to day shift, either sleeping too much or not enough. But the work schedule repeated itself in a pattern, so it was nice to at least plan days off in advance. One particular night in December, I had just finished my three work days of night shift. It was hard trying to fall asleep at night on that first night off, but it was essential to get my body back to sleeping at night again to change back to the day shift work schedule, which I needed for the following three days. This first transition night, I would typically sleep very lightly. It had been snowing outside since dark, which was around 5 p.m., and a few inches were already on the ground by the time I went to bed around 11 p.m., and I fell asleep within the hour. I woke up around 3 a.m., and the house was dead silent. I laid there in the complete darkness, hoping I would drift right back to sleep soon, but after just two to three minutes, I heard a violent banging right outside my bedroom window. I recognized the sound as someone trying to open the locked basement bilco doors. I jumped out of bed and ran down the long hallway to the opposite end of the house where the rear sliding glass door was and the outside floodlight switches. I switched on the lights and looked out the sliding glass door toward the basement bilco doors. There was nobody there. I looked closer and could see fresh footprint tracks in the snow coming from the small path in the woods leading right up to the basement doors. There was no snow on the handle to pull the doors open, indicating that someone recently tried to open them. I saw a second set of footprints leading away from the basement doors with what is sometimes called a rooster tail, indicating someone ran as fast as they could away from the house. I stayed awake until almost dawn, leaving the floodlights turned on to the back side of the house. I decided to follow the tracks into the woods at daybreak, but the newly fallen snow and blowing wind had covered them up completely after I made it a few feet into the woods. I concluded whoever it was trying to break in probably heard my 240 pound body charging down the hallway inside the house and they ran off into the woods before I was able to get to the sliding glass door and turn on the lights. I decided to not call the police, since nothing was damaged or stolen. From that day on, I made sure to keep all the doors locked and no longer left the garage open all day unless I was working there. Eight years later, I sold the house without any further incidents occurring since that one particular event. This happened during a road trip I was taking on the way back from seeing my family for the holidays. I'm not usually one to drive more than a couple hours because I much prefer flying, but this year the tickets to where I was going were way more expensive for some reason. It would have cost me over a thousand bucks for a round trip flight that only went a few states over. I had planned everything out so that I'd get home a few days before I had to go to work. But a snowstorm blew in on the day I was going to leave, so I had to stay an extra two days before finally starting the drive. 
The roads were empty since it was past the holiday rush and most of the drive is pretty out of the way from the big cities. The hardest part of it was always staying awake and fighting the boredom. The first eight or so hours went by without any trouble though. Sure, I was tired, but the snow on the road kept me awake and attentive. It was about 10 p.m. and I had a hotel booked in a small town just two hours further ahead. But as I drove, a small light came up in my mirror. It was the headlights of someone behind me, which was actually the first person I'd seen on the road with me in over an hour. Their lights were getting bigger quickly though, showing that they were coming up really fast. And soon, I could see that it was actually a large van of some kind. It was only a one lane road, so I couldn't get out of their way, but I figured they would still swerve around me, given they were going so fast. Once they reached the back of my car though, they matched my speed and stayed behind me. After a few seconds, I realized they weren't trying to get around me, and we drove like that for almost 10 minutes. It was kind of unnerving, being that it was only us on the road, and yet this huge van was trailing right behind me. It wasn't a normal following distance either. They were so close that I couldn't even see their front bumper or license plate in my mirror. Maybe I was quick to feel uneasy about it, but an exit came up for a gas station and I chose to turn off, hoping they would stay on the road and that I could put some distance between us. But as I veered off and down the exit ramp, they stayed right behind me. I pulled into the gas station and parked at one of the pumps as the van pulled into the pump behind me. At this point, I just didn't know what was happening. Part of me thought that this was something bad, but another part of me thought I was just overreacting. I knew that this was the only gas station in the past 30-ish minutes, so it wasn't all that unlikely that they would also need gas. Before getting out to fill up my tank, I shut my car off and looked around. The store part of the gas station had its lights off and a closed sign hanging from the door. I looked to the sides of it seeing nothing but empty darkness. No houses, no buildings, just a field covered in snow with a single road going through it. I looked in my mirror. A man was now standing outside of the van and putting gas in, so I got out and began doing the same. As the numbers slowly ticked on the gas meter, the man quickly put his pump back and sealed his gas cap. I looked over seeing him walking to the back of his van. Then I heard the loud ratcheting sound of the back door being lifted open. There was something in that moment, maybe a gut feeling or just an instinct of some kind, that told me to get out of there. I pulled the pump out of my car, and not even a second later, three men were sprinting at me from around the back of the van. I dropped the pump on the ground and quickly got in my car, locking the doors just as one of them grabbed the handle and tried to rip it open. I was shaking and moving as quick as I could to get the car on. All three of them went around trying each door, but then immediately sprinted back to their van before I'd even had the chance to pull away. When I did though, I saw them drive away soon after, going in the opposite direction down the way we had come from. I let the police know what happened, but never even got a call back with any updates. I think it's obvious they were trying to abduct people under the cover of night on the vast unpopulated highway. What's terrifying is how confident, and for lack of a better word, professional, the whole operation was. It seemed that as soon as they realized I was securely in my car and it wasn't going to be effortless, they fled the scene without even needing to communicate with each other. It was like they had done it many times before. What would have happened if they'd gotten me, I don't know, but I urge everyone to learn from my mistakes because you may not be as lucky as I was. In 2019, I did deliveries for a pizza place near my school. 
I'd work most days after class so I could afford to pay for my car and rent. It wasn't a great job in any aspect, but it was good enough to get me through college without being completely broke. This night was no different than most in the beginning. I clocked in at 6 and delivered for 3 hours straight, then took a lunch break and started again at 9.30. I picked up the next order and started heading to the place. The address didn't look like a house, but the route it took me on to get there was not what I was expecting. It took me further out from town, away from most houses and stores, and into a business center. It was an area full of small office buildings and nothing else. I drove down the road and couldn't really tell what any of the addresses were, so I just followed the directions on the GPS and hoped it would take me into the right parking lot. When I turned in, I drove through a pretty long parking area until I reached the front of the building and could read the address. It matched up with the one on the order, but something was off. The parking lot was completely empty, not even the streetlights were on, and the office building had no signs of anyone being inside. I double-checked the address, thinking there must have been a mistake, but it all checked out. I even tried searching it on Google for any places nearby with the same address, but no, this was it. I set my car in park and got out, glancing around before walking up to the door. It was a glass door with a dark tint covering it. I knocked, then took a step back and waited. It only took a moment before the door opened. It was a middle-aged man wearing very casual clothes and holding a small grin on his face. He suddenly got overly excited and said he was happy the food had finally arrived and that everyone was hungry. I looked behind him, not seeing anyone else, and only a single light on in the middle of the hallway. But I ignored it and just told him his total. He must have realized what I was looking for though, as he quickly explained that everyone else was in the rec room on the third floor for a company party. I smiled to be polite, but the man was talking with an overwhelming amount of excitement. So much so that it almost felt like he had to be faking it. He pulled out his wallet and handed me cash for the pizzas, along with a $10 tip. But as I took the money, he asked me for a favor. He wanted help bringing the pizzas up to the third floor. The man had put me in a strange position. Having taken the generous tip already, it felt like it would only be right to help him. On the other hand though, carrying a few pizzas isn't exactly difficult and it didn't seem necessary by any means. He started walking without me having answered yet, urging me to follow him as he made his way to a door leading to some stairs. I trailed behind, keeping my distance but following him into the stairwell. As I entered though, I felt a cold rush of air and noticed all the lights were off. Only the small light from the hallway lit the entrance to the stairs. The man started making his way up, but stopped once he realized I hadn't continued following him. He turned and made a humorous remark about the lights, but his grin was quick to leave once he saw that I wasn't going to follow him anymore. There was no hesitation as he came rushing down toward me with anger in his eyes. I tossed the pizzas on the ground, rushing out of the door and into the hallway then running for the exit and bolting to my car. I saw the man come partly out of the front doors before going back in and slamming them shut. I immediately called the police after driving to a different parking lot. The man had run off by the time they got there, and since he paid in cash, there was no way to know who he really was. The office building was empty though, and there was nobody else on the third floor, so it's clear that it was just some sort of trap. What he had ready for me on the third floor is unknown, and I hope that nobody ever has to know.
I work for my dad at his small construction business. He runs a yard and warehouse full of materials, as well as manages the job sites the workers are at. Since I was only 17 at the time, my job was to basically be the errand boy. I'd drive materials back and forth and pick up anything that was needed. Depending on the job though, some materials would need to be there before workers arrived because they would need them so they could get to work right away in the morning. So every once in a while, during busy weeks, I'd have to start work really early, like 2 or 3 a.m., to make sure I could drop everything off in time. Obviously, this was only during the summer, when I didn't have school, so I really had no excuse for not being able to work. I liked doing the deliveries early though, because it was calm and I didn't have to deal with anyone telling me what to do. On this day, I arrived at the warehouse at 3 a.m. and loaded up, then started making my way to the job site. It was a repair job on an old, maybe even abandoned, building at the edge of our town. When I got there, I saw a truck parked right outside. Its lights were off and it didn't look like anyone was nearby. It was way too early for anyone to be working, so I wasn't expecting to see any cars here. I parked and got out, walking up to it and seeing that it wasn't a company vehicle either. The windows were tinted and I couldn't see inside. I turned and looked at the building, trying to see if anyone was here. I called out, asking if anyone was inside, but got no response. Feeling a little weird about it, I pulled out my phone and called my dad. It rang for a minute, then went to voicemail. Figuring it was probably just a worker's personal truck that they'd left there, I went back to my truck and started unloading the materials. It took probably an hour, then I got back in and started to drive off. As I left the area though, I looked at my rearview mirror, and suddenly, the truck's lights turned on. I practically slammed on my brakes, stopping on the side of the road and watching as the truck started to back out. Someone was in there the whole time. Knowing that, I was sure that it couldn't have been a worker because they definitely would have responded to me. I sat and watched as they made their way out of the parking area and onto the road. I grabbed my phone and quickly dialed my dad's phone number again. While I waited for him to pick up, I looked over, seeing the truck had stopped right next to me. I stared at their window, knowing someone behind it was probably staring at me. I tossed my phone on the seat and started to drive forward, but the truck was quick to match my speed and prevent me from getting back onto the road. But there was nowhere else for me to go. To my left were trees, and to my right was this truck blocking my way. I started to panic, putting the car in reverse and trying to back up. The truck did the same until they tapped the side of my car, making me lose control and slide completely off the shoulder and hit the side of a tree. The truck quickly stopped right at the top of the road, as if they were going to get out. But then their brake lights suddenly turned off again as they put it back in drive and sped away. Just 20 seconds later, another car pulled up to the side of the road, and a man got out and ran up to me, asking if I was okay. I didn't know his name at the time, but it was one of the workers that was just arriving at the job site. He only saw the last bit of what happened, but said he recognized the other truck as Samuels, who was another worker my dad had hired a few months ago. As it turned out, a bunch of tools and materials were missing from the job site, adding up to almost $10,000, and that's only from that one night. He could have been slowly stealing a few things at a time over the past few months. I think what happened that night, though, was that Samuel thought that by me seeing his truck, it would eventually all get traced back to him and he'd get caught, so he tried to stop me. I don't know what he would have done to me, but considering I was the only witness, it's likely that he wouldn't have gotten caught as long as I was never seen again. Unfortunately though, 
His name and everything else didn't add up to anything, and it was likely he was either an illegal immigrant or some kind of felon that went through the effort of getting fake or stolen IDs and work documents. I was never expecting something like that to ever happen, but at least it's really unlikely that I'll ever see that man again. I work part-time at a gas station in my city. It's more on the edge of the city, near the suburbs, and overall is just a very typical gas station. It's not super creepy or isolated or anything like that. I only really chose to work here though because rent prices were going up and my other job wasn't cutting it. The only shift I could do to work around my other schedule was overnight, and gas stations are one of the few places offering those shifts. Anyway, this was just 10 months ago. It was pretty cold out this night, and there was some snow on the ground still from a heavy downfall a few days ago, but other than that, the night was going pretty typical. Being in the suburbs, there's not a whole lot of traffic going around the gas station. It's mostly just a couple cars passing by every once in a while. By 12, only a handful of cars were coming into the gas station every hour, after a bit, I got bored enough to leave the front desk and walk around the shop, rearranging the items on the shelves to look nice. And it was just a couple minutes later that I heard the door open. I turned around and saw a man walking in, right up to the front desk. He leaned over the counter and looked both ways as if he were looking for someone to help him. Can I help you with something? I said as I made my way back to the counter. The man turned and looked at me, almost as if I'd scared him, but then he hesitated before saying, no, I'm good, and walking out of the store. It was fairly obvious he did need help with something, but seeing that made me quickly think of the possible robbery he was plotting. I did work at a gas station after all, so it was kind of always in the back of my mind. I watched the guy go outside and into a car that was parked in a very strange spot, kind of near the pumps but not actually in the parking section. He got in and drove away. I had no way to tell if he was actually planning something, but all of the signs pointed to it. I figured maybe being behind him when he walked in and not at the counter threw him off and somehow that was enough to deter him. Whatever happened. I was confident after a few minutes of thinking that this was definitely an attempted robbery and I called the police to report it, just in case they were going to try a different gas station. They said an officer would come by in just a couple minutes to get a report, so I hung up and waited. But not even a minute later, that same car pulled back into the parking lot. They went right to the spot that they had parked before, then just waited there with the car on but I was almost positive that I could see movement in both of the front seats, like there were at least two people in there. I quickly locked the front doors and prepared myself for what could soon happen. As I continued looking out the window though, the car just stayed there, nobody getting out, like they were watching or waiting for the perfect moment. Luckily though, Cops pulled in and immediately recognized the car as I described it. They pulled in behind it, blocking them in. Surprisingly, there wasn't much of a scene. The officer pretty much just walked up and then pulled two men out, one of which was the guy that had come in earlier. I guess they were trying to play it off like they weren't doing anything, but that didn't really work out for them. While it seemed to be straightforward what they had planned, their car showed a different, more disturbing possibility. In the trunk, there was a stash of weapons, along with rope, tape, and an assortment of similar items. Both men are behind bars, but I still feel almost traumatized after knowing what they had in the car. If I hadn't reported them after the first strange interaction, I would have been through far worse than just being robbed and possibly would have never been seen after that night.
I work for a company that sells bulk products out of a small warehouse. Sometimes the products we get in are pretty expensive, so I was hired as a security guard during the late hours of the day and most of the night. Being a small warehouse, there's not too much need to walk around the place all night. I spend most of my time in the office, looking at a bunch of live camera feeds. During my first three years working there, I'd never had a single incident. No people ever came by at strange hours, no attempted break-ins, nothing. It made for a boring job, and left me mostly unaware every night, even though it was basically my job to be aware. On this night, I pulled into the small parking lot and parked by the front door next to the car of the only other worker that was still there. When I got inside, I let him know I was there, and he left shortly after. I checked all the doors and made sure the systems were working properly. Then I sat back at the office and stared at the screens. My attention span died out after half an hour and I pulled my phone out. I still made sure to check the cameras every 30 seconds or so, but every glance back at the screens showed no differences. Then at just a couple minutes before 1am, the system made a beep sound. I'd only ever heard it during the initial tests I'd do at the beginning of my shifts, so this was the first time I'd actually had something come up. After a quick look at the alert, it was a motion detection of a person walking by the building. It took a few tries to find the right camera, but on the back side of the building, a man was walking right on the edge of where the parking lot meets the grass. He had a thick hoodie on and was too far to see exactly what he looked like. The direction he was walking in wasn't really toward anywhere though. I mean, that's why I'd never gotten alerts before, because our building is too far out of the way for anyone to ever have a reason to walk or drive by it. I watched this man go down to the end of the parking lot, switching cameras to keep track of him, but then he suddenly stopped for just a moment and looked toward the building. He turned his head back and forth, looking across the whole side, then started to walk onto the pavement and toward the side of the building. Immediately, it went from just odd to possibly something I'd have to report on. The man walked along the side, looking at every door he came across, but not trying anything. He would just kind of look around and then move on. Once he got to the corner, he went around to the front and then went right up to the main door. I watched from the cameras as he knocked on the door and heard it echo from inside the building. I got up from my chair and opened the office door slowly, looking down the hallway and seeing the man standing behind the entrance doors. I don't think he could see me through the glare on the glass, so I stood in the doorway and just watched him for a moment. He was trying to look through and knocked on the door again. I went back into the office and pressed on the speaker button that allowed me to talk to them outside. This is a private location. You need to leave. I watched on the cameras as the man looked up at the speaker. He looked like he was going to say something, but then he frowned and turned, knocking on the door again. In this moment, something just struck me with an intense eerie feeling. It was some sort of gut reaction to this man's behavior. I looked closer, noticing he was keeping one hand in his pocket the whole time, making me think this could be far more dangerous than I'd initially thought. I contacted the police through our security line, getting instant connection with them and starting to explain the situation. I walked back into the hallway and looked down while I talked to the dispatcher but the man suddenly pulled something out of his pocket and slammed it against the door. I couldn't see what it was, but from the way it hit the door and the sound it made, I knew it was some kind of metal object that he was trying to break the glass with. I rushed back into the office, hearing a few more hits as I locked the heavy door behind me. Then I quickly looked back at the cameras, but by then, the man had given up and was running away from the building. In only a few seconds, he was completely out of sight of any of the cameras. 
It was as I waited for the police to arrive that I replayed the footage of when the man hit the door. Seeing pretty clearly that he was holding a small gun and slamming the handle against the glass. We got a full report on it, but so far even with some decent footage of the man, he hasn't been identified. We also don't know what he was intending to do once he got in, though he made it obvious after hearing my voice that he did not care that I was inside. But from the partial crack formed on the door, he was likely just a few hits away from shattering it, and then I would have been forced to find out the man's true intentions. I'm a former Target employee and worked in the clothing department mainly. I worked there for seven months total, and I liked working there. It was a good job, and most of the coworkers, as well as customers, were nice. But there was one coworker that I had some problems with. It was a guy named Ed, and he worked in the electronics department. Over time, I got to know him a little bit. Not that well, though. There's a lot of turnover at a store like Target, but also many employees that stick around. So the people in all departments that worked there for most of the time that I did, I either recognized or got to know. I only spoke to Ed briefly once or twice for the first several months. I was much closer with many other coworkers. But one time, I was taking my break and was by myself in the break room. I think it was a little bit later at night and that's why nobody else was in there. Well, just a couple of minutes after I got in there, Ed entered and then started talking to me. He was friendly for the most part and asked me some things about myself and I was friendly back to him. But then, like five minutes into the conversation, he asked if I wanted to hang out with him and suggested that he could come over to my house. Now, I really didn't want to hang out with him and I especially didn't want him coming over. I said I didn't think that I could and then I changed the subject because it was kind of awkward. We talked for the rest of my break. Well, it was mostly Ed talking and I was just listening. Finally, I was back to work. I didn't really see Ed for the rest of my shift that night, but over the next week or two, Ed started to talk to me more and more. He would go out of his way to see me, and he asked me again if he could come over to my house. He was starting to be a bit of a creep, to be honest with you. After that, though, I kind of stopped seeing him. I didn't really think about it until I heard that he had been fired. I didn't get any details on why he had been fired or exactly when. I also didn't really give it that much thought other than realizing that he wouldn't be talking to me anymore. So for the next week or so, work went on as usual. But one day, I was not at work but back home in my apartment. I got a text message from Ed. At first, I didn't know who it was because I didn't recognize the number. I did not have Ed's number, but I was part of a large target group chat with a bunch of us coworkers. Anybody in it could see my number, and I guess Ed was still a part of it. He texted me saying that it was him and told me that he was going to come over to my house. I was thinking, what's up with this guy and going to my house? I texted him back saying, please don't come to my house, Ed. It was nice to work with you at Target, but I don't think we should hang out. I expected him to understand, but apparently he didn't. Now, he didn't respond to what I said, so I wasn't sure if he was mad or not or if he even read it. But a few hours went by, and that night I was still at home. I lived by myself in my apartment, which was on the first floor of my building. It was probably like 9 o'clock at night when Ed texted me back finally. He said that he was at my house. When I read those words, I instantly started sweating and my heart began racing. How did he know where I lived? Was he really at my house? I started to text back, but didn't know what to say. I went over to my door and looked out the peephole into the hallway. Nobody was there. Maybe he was at my apartment, but not in the building yet. I looked out of my back window as well and didn't see anything. I hoped that he wasn't actually there, but it was a really strange thing to say if he wasn't. Finally, I texted back, telling Ed that I wasn't at home. I thought that maybe that would make him leave if he was here, or deter him from coming over if he wasn't. But he responded by saying, Yes, you are home. I saw you. When I read that text, I started looking around like a paranoid person. My mind was racing. I was thinking crazy thoughts, like maybe he was already inside of my apartment, hiding under my bed or something. But he wasn't. 
I looked in all of my rooms. I then texted him back, asking him where he was. He responded by saying, at my house. I was confused by this, and I looked out of the peephole and windows again without seeing him. I started to think that maybe he was just joking. At least, that's what I was trying to convince myself. I went back over to my peephole again and looked out of it. I was looking out of it for like a minute straight, but still, nobody was there. I turned around, and then I saw him. He was standing on my patio, right outside of my sliding door, and looking in. I screamed like crazy and then ran from my bedroom. I locked myself inside of it and then called the police. A few moments later, I heard a knocking on my sliding door. I got another text from Ed telling me to let him in and asking me why I screamed. I ignored it and told the 911 dispatcher what the situation was. They told me that an officer would be there shortly. Ed then tried calling me, but I didn't answer and ignored it. He texted me several more times and I put my phone down because I didn't even want to look at it. It was then that I started to hear a loud banging coming from my sliding door. He really wanted me to let him in. This went on for the next several minutes. It honestly felt like forever. At last, the police arrived. I heard Ed talking with them loudly and I left the bathroom. I soon saw him talking with officers and they eventually got him to leave. Then I spoke with the officers and I told my side of the story. Ed ended up getting trespassed from my apartment's property, and he was told not to come back. Luckily, I haven't seen him since then. I haven't heard from him either. Obviously, I blocked his number and stuff. Hopefully, I never hear from him again. One of the scariest moments of my life happened when I went to Target last year. I went there one night to do some normal grocery shopping. There's a Target not that far at all from where I live, and I go there almost weekly. So I got there sometime at night, and I don't recall exactly when. I went inside, got a cart, and then started getting my items. I was inside of the store, probably for about 20 minutes shopping at least. Then I finally checked out and left the store. I headed back to my car, which I had parked not even that far away. But when I arrived at my vehicle, which is a pretty normal sedan, something happened. I was behind it and about to go around and put the groceries in the back seat. That's when I saw somebody looking at me through the back window from inside my car. It was a man and I didn't see him well at all because he ducked down less than a second after I saw him. I freaked out and left the cart there and went running back inside of the target. After making it back inside, I dialed 911 to call the police. I told them that somebody was inside my car at the target. Then, I waited inside the store for the police to arrive. It took probably less than five minutes for them to get there, but in the meantime, when I was waiting, I was standing just a little ways inside of the Target, near the first aisle. As I was waiting for the police, I was sure that I saw the guy that was in my car enter the store. He immediately walked to the right and didn't appear to notice me. I wasn't 100% sure, because like I said, I only saw him for probably less than a second inside my car window but I was probably about 80% sure. I went down one of the aisles in case he was looking for me or something. A short time later, the police arrived. I went out of the store with them and we checked my vehicle. Whoever was inside of it was now gone, but my doors were all unlocked. I must have somehow forgot to lock them when I went inside of Target. I didn't have anything inside my car worth stealing though. I usually kept it pretty empty and clean. Still, what was a random man doing inside of my car? I had never seen him before. I gave his description to the police and I also let them know that I thought I saw him inside Target. I made it clear that I wasn't 100% sure, but I was pretty certain that it was him and it made me think that it was more likely to be him after knowing he wasn't in my car anymore. The man had dark hair, was sort of short, and wearing a tan t-shirt and jeans. He also appeared to be pretty young, in probably his 20s or maybe early 30s. The police told me that they would go into Target and see if he was still there. I stayed by my car, talking to another officer for maybe 5 or 10 more minutes. Another officer said they did not locate the man inside Target and figured that he must have left. They said they would take one more look around the store and I could go home if I wanted to. At that point, I finally left to drive home. Now, the Target that I go to is near a lot of other stores, but the way that I exit is I drive down the road to the side of Target. Then I go down this quiet road that leads to more stores about a quarter mile down the road. When I was driving down that road, 
I saw this guy randomly walking alongside of it. It was weird because there was no sidewalk there and it wasn't very well lit, so you wouldn't really expect people to walk along it. Just seconds later is when I realized that it was the same guy. As I was approaching him, he turned and saw me. That's when he bolted out onto the street suddenly. It was like he was running towards me and I veered to the right to avoid him. I wasn't going very fast, but luckily he didn't get to me and I was able to successfully get around him. Then I sped away from him as he stood in the road. No other cars were nearby, and I got out my phone and called the police to report the guy. After that, I was finally able to make it back home okay. Looking back, I still can't believe that it happened. I avoided that target for weeks after the events. Finally, I was able to go back, and I still shop there sometimes. Nothing like that has happened, and I haven't seen the guy either. I'm hoping that whoever he was, the police found him, where he stopped his wild behavior. I used to work at Target a couple of years ago. I worked inside the store on the sales floor and mostly on the grocery side. During this time, I was a part-time employee and I worked maybe 20 to 30 hours a week. One night, I was working a pretty standard shift for me. It was from 4 p.m. to 10 p.m. When it started, things were kind of busy. I would move all around one side of the store and do whatever I needed to, mainly stock shelves or organize things. I also answered customer questions and told them where certain items were if they wanted to know. I'd been working there for about six months at the time, and I knew the store like the back of my hand. So fast forward to about 9.30 p.m. or so that night. By then, the store had become very quiet. We were open until 11 p.m. back then, so we were not about to close, but it was still very quiet. Many of my coworkers had left, and the overnight team was beginning to arrive. On the grocery side, though, it was easy to stay busy. That side always had more shoppers, so it required more attention. All of the employees at Target carry a walkie-talkie for communication. I heard somebody say my name on the walkie, and I responded to them. I wasn't sure who it was, but they told me to go to the next channel, so I did. I was used to people calling me on there, and had received several calls earlier in the night. When you got a call on the walkie, usually it was anything from taking a break to being needed in another section of the store. As I was flipping to the next channel, I was wondering who it was that was calling me. After changing channels, I announced that I was there. At first, I heard nothing at all. Then, after a few seconds, I heard this creepy sounding laugh. It went on and on, and I spoke again asking who it was that was talking to me. They didn't answer though, and just kept laughing. Once more, I asked who it was, but was starting to suspect that it was a joke. Then they stopped laughing and said my name. It was a man speaking in a very deep voice, like he was trying to disguise it. He said that he was waiting for me in the parking lot. I laughed a little, assuming that it was somebody just messing around. After all, most of us were just about done for the night. I still couldn't figure out who it was, though. I kept working, and pretty soon was done and could clock out. I went into the employee-only area, got my things, and then left the store. Now, the parking lot was very quiet. Most of the cars belonged to employees and were parked towards the middle. Then there was my car, parked near the way back corner. It had been very busy when I arrived. So when I was walking out to my car, and about halfway there, I noticed one other car parked near mine. It was a few rows over and to the left, at least a hundred feet away, but the engine was running. When I reached my vehicle, and was just a few feet from it, I noticed the car starting to drive. I really wasn't thinking anything of it, until it began heading in my direction. And not only that, but it started going really fast. I didn't recognize the car as belonging to anybody that I knew. It quickly drove closer and I got inside of my car and locked the door. Then the car parked in the space next to mine, but going in the opposite direction. I looked over, but the window was really tinted and I couldn't really see in. It was at that moment that I remembered what the person had said to me on the walkie. Was that not a joke? I sort of had a bad feeling about this. Still, I figured that I would just drive home, and I hoped that whoever this was would not follow me. As soon as I started to pull away though, the car started driving and turned around. I then realized that's exactly what was going on. I turned and started heading back towards Target. I didn't want to drive home being followed. I drove back towards the front middle of the parking lot and closer to the store. This was where most of the other cars were parked and scattered around. 
I parked in between two other cars that were parked already. The car that was following me drove closer, but then parked across and a little ways back. Now it was maybe 50 feet away from me. Then I got out of my car and walked extremely fast for the entrance of Target. I looked back briefly and saw that the car was still running, but nobody got out. That made me feel a little bit better. After I made it inside Target, I saw one of my coworkers who I knew walking by, and I told him about what happened. We both decided to look and see if the car was still there. After making it to the entrance doors, we looked out and I pointed to the car. We watched it, and then something surprising happened. It pulled out of the parking space that it had backed into. Then it slowly drove up the aisle and out of sight. The car had finally left. I then left Target once more and headed for my vehicle. I walked quickly and made it inside. Then I started the engine and backed out. But after I backed out, I was going to drive down the normal way that I usually left. But it was then that I saw a car in the far distance coming from the corner of the parking lot opposite to me. It was headed in my direction and I was pretty sure that it was the same car. I scrambled to turn my car to face the other direction. The car was still really far away from me, but it was getting closer. Then I quickly drove out of the lesser used back exit of Target. This road led to another quieter road that went behind another store that was nearby. I think that it was a sporting goods store, and after I went on the road, I went into the parking lot. From there, I drove all the way around the sporting goods store and parked on the side of it. I knew that the car following me would have no way of knowing that I was there. It probably assumed that I just tried to get back on the highway. I waited there, just hoping that I would not see headlights coming around the corner. Several minutes went by, and thankfully, I didn't. Then, I was finally able to leave and go home. After that experience, nothing like that happened while working at Target. I don't know who it was that was talking to me that night on the walkie. It was very possible to get on our frequency, even if you were in the parking lot. I just don't know who would do it, or why. This happened not that long ago. I went to the grocery store one night that was kind of near my house. It was only like 10 minutes away. I was inside the grocery store for maybe 30 minutes. Inside, things were not very busy, and it was maybe 9 p.m. When I left the grocery store, I went back to my car, which was parked at about the middle of the parking lot. There were cars scattered all around, but not too many. I noticed that there was a car parked right next to mine, though, that wasn't there before. I only really noticed it because there were lots of open spaces around it. The car parked next to mine was a silver-colored sedan. I didn't pay it much attention and started loading my groceries into the back of my car. But when I was just about done, I glanced over at the car that was parked next to me and noticed somebody sitting in the driver's seat. It appeared to be a man, and he was wearing a clown mask. This mask in particular was really creepy looking. It wasn't one of those cheap ones, but a really detailed one. I didn't know why he was wearing it, because it wasn't anywhere near Halloween. It just seemed kind of random and odd. He wasn't looking at me, though. I put my cart back and then went to my driver's door and got inside. It was then that I looked over and noticed that the clown guy was looking right at me from inside his car. He didn't wave or move or anything, but was just staring in my direction. I smiled at him, figuring that it was some kind of a joke. Then I started my engine and drove away. As soon as my car started, he started his car as well. When I began driving, he did the same. I watched his car follow mine to the end of the parking lot, and I was worried. Immediately, it seemed like this clown guy was trying to follow me. I left the parking lot and went onto a quiet road, and then that one took me to a busier one. The clown drove behind me the whole way. The roads were pretty quiet with it being later at night. There was not a good chance that he could get stuck in traffic trying to follow me or something. If it was rush hour, that might have been a possibility. Instead, he easily stayed on my tail as I drove down the highway. After maybe five minutes there, I was getting worried of what I would do. I couldn't let this guy follow me all the way back home. So when I was driving, I called my boyfriend to tell him the situation. He was really confused when I told him a clown was following me on the highway. He thought I was joking at first and started laughing. I told him that I was serious and this was not a joke. Still. He didn't seem to take it as serious as I was. I told him that I was going to drive to his house. My boyfriend's house is about five minutes away from mine. He said that was fine with him and told me not to worry about it. I did feel a little bit better knowing he wasn't too concerned, but still, this clown guy was really creeping me out. 
It's one thing to dress as a clown later at night, but it's another to follow somebody home. Several minutes later, I exited the highway, followed by the clown. Then I took a quiet road for about a mile before the turnoff for my boyfriend's street. When I turned, the clown behind me did as well. The street was very quiet at this time of night. My boyfriend's house was about halfway down the street and on the right side. When I reached it, I began pulling into the driveway. It seemed as though the clown was going to do the same thing. That's when I saw the door to the house open and my boyfriend running out. He was wearing a clown mask of his own, one that he wore at a Halloween party a couple of years ago. He was holding a yellow wiffle ball bat as well and waving it around like a crazy person. The clown in the car behind me started pulling into the driveway and then stopped. My boyfriend was screaming like a madman and went running straight for the clown's car behind me. Then the clown backed out and drove away before my boyfriend could reach him. I got out of the car and asked my boyfriend if he was out of his mind. I couldn't believe what he was doing. He took his mask off and started laughing, calling the other clown a wimp for running away. We went inside after that, and I ended up being really glad that he did that. It could have been extremely dangerous though. Who knows who that guy in the clown mask was and what he wanted. Maybe that was just his way of disguising himself, and me being a young woman he was trying to stalk me. I'm really not sure, but I'm glad that my boyfriend considered the whole thing one big joke. He told me that he thought of the idea when I told him I was going to his place. He remembered the clown mask and thought he would out-clown the clown. I'm really glad that it worked. So, this story took place just a few weeks ago. It's really bizarre and also scary. I play in a fantasy football league with a bunch of my friends. If anybody doesn't know, in fantasy football, you draft players that are in the NFL, and based on their performances for the week, your team gets points. Your team plays another team every week. There's playoffs and a championship game at the end. Well, in the league that I play with my friends, whoever gets last place in the league has to get punished. Before the season starts, people think of ideas for punishments, and we vote on it and decide it. So everybody knew that this year, our punishment was to dress up as a clown. Then the loser would have to walk down one of the busiest streets in our nearby city. Thankfully, I didn't lose, but one of my best friends, Ben, did. My friend Jordan and I decided to go with him for his punishment. We were going to record it and send it to everybody else in the league. We first went to a party supply store and bought a cheap clown mask and costume. Then we wrote on a piece of cardboard, I suck at fantasy football. We then drove to the city, which was about 15 minutes away. It's a pretty large city and also very busy. When we got there, the sun was setting, but there was still a lot of people out. Ben reluctantly put on his loser clown outfit and we were laughing like crazy. We parked in this little parking lot on the edge of downtown and then walked several blocks. When we got into the heart of the city, Ben had to walk the entire way down the street and back. He kept trying to negotiate and make it a shorter walk but it was our responsibility to make sure that the punishment was fulfilled. <laughs> ben walked on the sidewalk and people were staring at him. We laughed and got our pictures and videos. Then we started to head back. When we did though, we noticed that there was another person dressed as a clown. It was really strange to see. I mean, there were a lot of people around, but I didn't expect to see someone else who looked like a clown. Obviously, we had to have Ben go over and say hi to the other clown. We walked over and when we got over to him, saw that his mask and costume was a lot better than Ben's. He didn't really seem amused though. The other clown just kind of stood there. Ben attempted a handshake with the other clown, but he left him hanging. He wasn't saying anything either, so we just left. We started walking back to our car, which would take probably less than five minutes or so. We walked along the sidewalk away from where most of the people were. It was a much quieter area where we parked. About a minute into the walk, Jordan said that the clown appeared to be following us. I looked back and saw him walking behind us, but a long ways away. We all found this funny and figured that the guy was just joking around. We kept walking and surprisingly, the clown remained behind us. Eventually, we crossed the street and had to go just another block to get to the car. When we crossed the street, it was much quieter and hardly anybody else was around. The clown then crossed the street as well. He appeared to be getting closer. I found it a little bit strange that he was still behind us. Soon we made it to the parking lot, and at that point, saw the clown had started to run after us. We all hurried to get inside of the car. 
We were laughing, but I honestly found it a little bit creepy. <laughs> I have a smaller SUV, and I was driving, with Jordan in the passenger seat and Ben in the back. I started the car and then watched and laughed as the clown kept running after us. When the clown reached the parking lot, he stopped. I started driving out, and we would have to go right past him. He was now standing by the exit. When I was starting to drive by the clown, he turned and faced us. Then I saw him pulling something out of his pocket. I didn't know what it was because I looked away to focus on the road. But the next thing I knew, I heard a loud noise come from the back of the car and a crashing of glass. Then I heard Ben say that the clown threw a brick at us. I drove out of there and the back window was half smashed. Everybody in the car was fine and Ben didn't get any glass on him or anything. We called the police though and reported the clown and were glad to get away from him. I thought he was harmless. It was creepy that he followed us, but we had no idea that he would pull a brick out and throw it at us. The whole situation is so crazy, I wouldn't believe it if I wasn't there myself. It made for the most memorable fantasy football punishment ever. I had a terrifying experience with a clown back when I was in high school. I know that sounds crazy, but it's true. It all started one night when I was at work. Back then, I lived with my parents and worked a job at a nearby convenience store. I walked to and from work, and I would ride the bus to school every day. Between work and school, I was pretty busy. So I started work from 3 p.m. until 9 p.m. on this night. Work went by as usual, and when I got off, I left to walk home. The walk would take me about 15 minutes on most days, and I didn't mind it. At my job, I would just be sitting at a counter most of the time so walking afterwards felt nice. Also, the neighborhood was generally really quiet. I never felt unsafe or had anything scary happen. It did seem a little bit creepy at night sometimes because of how quiet it would be. After leaving work, I started walking along the sidewalk. There were sidewalks for my entire walk home, but I did have to turn a couple of times. About two or three minutes into the walk, I noticed somebody kind of up ahead. They were standing on the grass between the sidewalk and the street, kind of randomly. It was dark out and they were far away, but when I approached, I soon realized that it was a clown, or at least it was somebody dressed up in a clown costume. It was really creepy looking, and I knew that I would have to walk past him. I didn't really want to, but I did. I tried not to look when I got close, and the clown didn't say anything to me. When I passed it by, I could sense him looking at me though. Still, I didn't look. I just walked past and kept going towards my house. At first, he appeared to stay where he was, but when I got like 20 feet away, I heard him move, and it sounded like he went onto the sidewalk. I got about 50 feet ahead of him, but then I heard him walking behind me. I hoped that he wasn't following me, but I had a bad feeling that he was. When I turned, I looked over and saw that the clown was walking a distance behind me. He turned exactly when I did. There was no question that he was following me, I kept going and tried to walk a little bit faster. I didn't look back, but listened closely in case the clown was going faster as well. He didn't seem to be getting any closer to me though. I crossed another street, which he also did. Now I only had a short distance to go before arriving home. When I got to my street, the clown walked after me. That's when I looked over my shoulder for the first time. He was there, maybe 40 feet back now, and was looking at me. I walked faster, and by now my heart was racing. I was really freaked out. I wanted to start running, but was afraid that the clown would do the same if I did. Instead, I remained as calm as I could and kept walking. Soon I made it to my driveway. I felt a lot better, but still had to make it inside the house. I walked up and got to the front step. It was at that point that the clown reached my driveway. Then I heard him starting to walk up the driveway after me. This made me really nervous, and I scrambled to use my house key to unlock the door. I was panicking, and that was causing me to go slower than usual. I heard the footsteps quickly approaching as I fumbled around with the key. At last, I had unlocked the door. I went inside extremely quick and then slammed the door and locked it behind me. I heard my mom say from the other room, what was that? She then called out my name, and I heard the doorknob turn behind me. I ran over to the living room and found my parents. I told them about the clown guy following me home. We went over to the door to look, but he was now gone. I told them the story, and my parents said that they would drive me to and from work for my next shift. 
We figured that the clown had left, and we were all very creeped out by this situation. Later that night, I went to bed, and the clown didn't come back or anything. But the next morning, I got up to catch the bus for school. It was really early and still dark out because school started at 7.25, so at about 6.50, the bus would usually arrive at my house. And after getting ready for school, I headed out. I left my house at about 6.45 and started walking to the end of my driveway where I would stand and wait for the bus. When I was beginning to walk down the driveway, I saw something out of the corner of my eye. I looked and saw the same clown coming around the corner from the side of the garage. I couldn't believe my eyes. I turned and ran back inside the house and called the police right there. Then I found my parents and told them what was going on. We all stayed inside the house until the cops got there. They found the clown hiding in the backyard. I couldn't believe it. I was sure that he had left the previous night. After that, I was able to get a ride with my parents to school because I missed the bus, but I was just grateful to be okay. It still blows my mind that the clown was there in our yard all night. We should have called the police the previous night after he had followed me home. We had just assumed that he left. I guess he camped out on the side of the garage, which was actually a really good hiding place. That guy was a total creep. This remains the scariest moment of my life. I'm now scared of clowns because of it. This happened when I was a freshman in high school. During this time, I lived at home with my parents and older sister. We lived in what I would describe as a pretty average neighborhood. Our backyard was sort of big, but overall it was a very populated area. So one night, I was at home playing video games in my bedroom. My sister was in her room and my parents were out in the living room. I always liked to play video games in my room and I had a really good setup in there. I had my gaming chair, big monitor, and a TV as well. I remember that after gaming for a long time, I got to a loading screen. I leaned back in my chair to stretch and I casually looked to my right out of my bedroom window. The window looked out to the backyard, and at the back of the yard was a small woods. Something caught my eye when I looked out there. It looked sort of like there was a clown looking at me from just inside the woods. At first, I thought surely that wasn't the case. I kept looking and was squinting my eyes to see better. It sure looked like there was a clown there. So I got up from my chair and walked over to the window. Now that I had a better view, I could see that there was in fact a clown there, or at least somebody that was wearing a clown mask. They were standing just a couple of feet into the woods, partially blocked by trees. But the clown was looking right at our house, possibly at my window. It was extremely creepy to see this. I ran out of my bedroom and found my parents in the living room. I told them there was some guy dressed as a clown in the backyard. They followed me to my bedroom window, but when we got there, whoever this guy was was now gone. I told my parents where he was and everything. We all went outside after that and looked around the backyard, although I was really creeped out. Luckily, we didn't see or hear anything when we were out there. The woods in our backyard was not that big. It only went back probably 20 feet, and then there was a fence. I was guessing whoever this guy was went through the neighbor's yard. At least he wasn't in our yard anymore. It was a real mystery as to who he was and what exactly he was doing back there. We all went back inside, and I went back to what I was doing. I looked out of my window every so often, but luckily the clown man did not return. The next couple of days were normal, no signs of the clown or anything. But it was less than a week later, and I found myself home alone. My parents were gone at friends, and my sister was at a friend's house also. I was playing video games in my bedroom, and it was probably about 9 o'clock at night. It was the same setup as the previous time. I randomly looked out of my window, which was to my right, about 15 feet away. I saw the clown guy again. This time, he was not in the woods though, but standing in the middle of the backyard, much closer. He was facing me and looking directly at my window. I got up and ran over to the window and covered it with my shades. I then ran out of my bedroom as quickly as possible. I didn't know what to do. Why would the clown guy come back? I called my parents and told them about it. They advised me to call the police if he didn't leave the yard immediately. So I looked out of another window, but I didn't see the guy anymore. I was hoping that meant that he left. I got off the phone with my parents and then looked out of several other windows. I didn't see the clown. 
Then I headed back to my bedroom. When I was walking in, though, I heard a knock at the front door. I went over and checked out the front window and saw the clown. He was standing on the front step. I just moved away from there and ignored it. I went back into my bedroom, put my headphones on, and forced myself to just play video games. I did that until my parents got back home. When they did, the clown guy was long gone. After that night, I kept my bedroom window covered at all times. I also didn't stay home by myself for several weeks because I was too creeped out to. I'm not sure if the clown guy ever came back or not, but I didn't see him or hear from him again.